Well, good morning. Today is April 30th, and it's right around, I don't know, 7.20 in the morning. So, today we got quite a bit of things to do on the to-do list, and it mainly revolves around trail cams. So, today's a perfect day to hike around, overcast, so shouldn't be overheating too bad. But, at this first spot, I'm going to hike into my brother's wallow. And I'm going to set up a trail cam there and then I'm going to leave this trail cam all the way until archery season which is September. It's like middle of September this year. This hike in right here is probably one of the few hikes that I dread the most. I just don't like hiking in there because I don't know this hike's just a pain. So uh, that's the reason why I'm just going to kind of like set up my trail cam and just forget about it. So. Once I'm done doing that, then I gotta drive around to a different area and I'm gonna go check up on my two trail cams that I left over winter. And then once I do that, I'm gonna replace batteries, make sure the SD cards are cleared and still debating on whether I wanna move those two trail cams or not. But I mean, I'll decide that later. And then after that, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna cook up lunch and then I'm gonna check on my other trail cam that I set up last month or not last month, but earlier this month and then we'll see how that goes. And depending on how much time we have left, we'll go around and scout for some turkeys because we've got the good news. Fishing game has opened up turkey hunting and fishing, like some, some fishing on May 5th. So definitely gotta go and get my updates on the turkeys. But for now, we gotta hike in a couple miles back in here. So less talking and let's get this over with. I literally pulled in here and I started like getting all my gear ready and I look across like a hundred yards away there's like three white-tailed deer just staring at me. <laughs> just feels good to be back in the woods. So I'm only a couple minutes into this hike and I just came across my first elk sign which looks like a lone bull track. Lone bull elk. So I'm on the road, he crossed the road and he's going back towards like this. Back in 2017, I shot my cow elk just down this way, a couple miles that way. So it's a good sign to see that there's still elk sign here. I haven't hunted this spot ever since September of 2018. So it's been a while since I've been here. So it's good to see that there's still elk tracks. I think that fawn right there is saying welcome back to the mountains. I very much appreciate that. I've been MIA from the mountains for too long. I got about three miles to get to my water hole so definitely not the shortest trek. So I definitely gotta pace up here. That is so stinking awesome. First bear of the year spotted. It's a cinnamon colored bear. I left my spotting scope at the car, but I'm gonna drop my pack down, get my tripod, and try to zoom you guys in on it. It's a nice bear.
Well, that's very exciting. First bear of 2020 spotted. Nice color phase. It looks like a black bear. Could be a grizzly, but just by the posture of the bear, I'm pretty sure it's a black black bear. And even the face looks like a black bear. I only have a 10 power binocular and at 630 yards, it's kind of it's kind of hard, but he disappeared into the brush. Decided to take a breather because I'm only like halfway there coming up this road. I knew there was a old clear cut there and I was just glassing around and I was mainly glassing for elk, but I'm happy, even more happy to be able to spot a bear. So not exactly sure where it went, but I think it's just out of view from here. I'm gonna walk up the road, try to get a different angle. And then uh, after I get enough happy time with him, then I'll continue my trek over to the wallow. Bears are out, and anybody with a spring bear tag, you should be pretty excited. Finally made it up and over this ridge and right now I'm starting my decline and I'm gonna head down to the bedding area check out the bedding area then side hill over to the wallow as I was working my way down on the scheme trail there's a couple different piles of elk scat or elk poo I should say looks like there was a couple of them might be a herd of cows That right there is rough grouse. The wallow is just right there. And I was I was working my way through this stuff and I don't know where the heck she was. She was right here somewhere and she flew right there. Scared the crap out of me. Gotta love grouse. There's a very distinct reason why the elk like to be on this side during the summer. The biggest thing is it's quiet. Like like it's quiet. If an elk was bedding here and there was somebody working their way to the elk, he'd, he'd already hear them like 200 yards away and he can already make his escape route. Second is it's cooler. As soon as I started my decline, I already felt the difference in temperature. It's a lot cooler on this side. And third, it's very steep. It's steep and thick. That's what elk like, so. All right, there's the wallow. Happy Valentine's Day. This is not how you spend your Valentine's Day. You don't release air balloons in the sky and then just turn it into litter, especially by my water hole. That is disrespectful. Here's the wallow, the top part of the wallow. And then it's like a creek that goes down. And there's a little pool right here. And then the creek just slowly goes down into the main creek at the bottom. Lots of memories, man. Well, technically one memory. Still can't believe it, man. That bull that I missed was standing right here. And I was right up here with my brother. Amateur, amateur move. Spooked him, 
he ran and he stood right here quartering away I stood up I had basically more than enough room to put it right behind his shoulder and I hit a twig and my arrow just went right into a tree so my trail cam is right there and it's gonna record up here I probably won't check this trail cam until archery season so it's gonna be up here for a good five uh, four and a half months or so till then I won't see this trail cam through two locks on it hopefully no bear is gonna come and just rip it off the tree or worse yet somebody just comes and steals it so setting up that trail cam took a lot longer than uh, I was expecting but got it done On to phase two. Phase one was set up my trail cam at the wallow, which I did. It took me four hours to start from the car and get back to the car. Got done with that spot. One hour drive later, I'm at my second spot. And this is the spot where I left two of my trail cams over winter. So I'm just gonna go and check them. And depending on the activity, I may or may not move them, move locations. So I'm just gonna go up there Go see what it's all about, come back to the car, and then maybe go cook lunch. And then phase three is check the trail cam that I set up about a month ago. Once I'm done with that, then off to turkey scouting. All right, so I checked my first trail cam and I got some cool pictures. They didn't take a lot of pictures, but the last picture I took was on January 15th of this year. And so I think that's when the camera batteries died. Um, I didn't swap out the batteries with new ones because I just wanted to drain out the old batteries because if I was to swap them with new batteries before I left them over winter, then I would have some like half used batteries that like you're just gonna waste so I just figured I would just drain out all these batteries but got some pretty cool pictures I did decide to move locations for the trail cam so originally it was up here where I left it over winter and then I brought it down to put it down here just because there's a game trail right here but I'll probably check this one uh, over the summer a couple different times but right now I gotta hike over to the other ridge where I set up my other trail cam and that one, I'm not exactly sure how long it lasted either, but I just hope it's still there. We gotta make our trek over there. It's already one o'clock, so we're gonna be spending the whole day today just doing homework. Of course, the wind decides to pick up as soon as I start to call. Finally made it to my second trail cam. Quite the trek. 
but this one's also dead which I'm not surprised so I'm just gonna quickly download the photos that I took and then this trail cam right here I'm just gonna leave it right here because I think this is a relatively decent spot I set it up on this game trail the camera is literally set up on the game trail so I'm just gonna pull out my adapter and let's see what we got this one took a lot more photos 329 items the other one only took 39 all right so I went through that camera took 329 images but probably like 300 of them were just nothing there were like three different times where the camera was just triggering like crazy and I literally took pictures of nothing maybe the wind was blowing but I don't understand why it did that on April 10th it looks like there was a bull elk that came and like sniffed my my trail cam but all you saw was his left antler I really wish he would have came down here so I could get a good look at him to see whether he shedded one side or the other but just because there was a bull that came and looked up my trail cam on April 10th 20 days ago I'm just gonna take this game trail and go look at this little ridge see if it fortunately dropped an antler over there That deer just does not care about me. I literally walked up to it 50 yards and it's just slowly feeding. The wind was blowing straight at her too. Or maybe she just didn't see me in the first place. That's a big doe. Okay, I lied. She just didn't see me or hear me. <laughs> She's just chilling. Please. No, leave her be. I am I am getting hungry. I gotta make my way back to the car. Go cook me some good food. Right now, I am so hungry, I can't even think straight anymore. So I just pulled up to a nice little flat spot where I can park. And right now, I'm gonna cook something. I didn't wanna cook this unless I deserved it. And after 11 miles of hiking today, with a lot of elevation in between, I feel like this is a well-deserved meal. And I'm actually not even done yet. After this, I'm actually gonna go check my third trail cam but fortunately that trail camp's not as far as the two trail camps that I just checked nor my water hole. So I should be able to check that trail cam with, with ease. But right now I'm gonna start cooking. The wind's kind of blowing so I apologize if the audio is bad but I'm hungry so we're gonna get to cooking.
All right, so here's what we're gonna be cooking. So this right here is just burbot. This is your typical, you know, deep fried burbot. This is just onion powder, garlic powder, and then I just coated it with the Louisiana fish fry. For my meat, this is a hind quarter chunk from the spike whitetail that I shot last year. And this is just cut into thin slices. And this is 50% hoisin sauce and 50% sriracha. It's been marinating for 48 hours. Usually you don't have to marinate it for that long, but the longer, the better, as far as my experience. And then along with that, we're just gonna be cooking it with cauliflower and broccoli, two of my favorites. And then uh, along with those, just a little bit of garlic. And usually I'll add yellow onion to this, but we didn't have any at home and I didn't want to go to the store just because of the whole situation right now. So I'm just using what I had at home, which is just these things, which it should be completely fine. So we're gonna cook this meal right here first and we'll cook the fish second because the fish should cook pretty fast. So we're just gonna add some vegetable oil. I just want enough to cover the bottom. some salt to the vegetables. And just add to taste. It smells so good. Just wanna mix that broccoli and that cauliflower with the poison sriracha sauce. And right now we're not really needing to cook the meat, we're actually just cooking the vegetables more so. So basically I'm adding the lid and I'm just steaming the vegetables. That way when you eat it, it's, it's not so hard. Although there's no problem with it, but I like mine to be kind of right in the middle where the broccoli and the cauliflower are kind of soft, but they're not like mushy. So it's just right in between. And I know that the lid is not correct for the pan, but I couldn't find the lid for this pan, so we're just using it. And so once we're done with this, I'm just gonna throw it in here and I'm gonna add a lid. And so since I'm gonna add it into this right here, this will also steam the vegetable. So I'm actually gonna kind of undercook the vegetable because I still have to cook the fish. So I'll let it cook in here while the fish is, you know, cooking. That's right about where I want it. It's still a little, the broccoli and the cauliflower are a little bit undercooked, but again, I'm not done cooking. I'm gonna throw it in here. And it's also gonna cook in here because I'm gonna close it and it's basically gonna steam it again. Oh, that's precious. All right, Let's throw that right there. And we are gonna, let this steam a little bit more and I'm going to add some vegetable oil just like that. I'm 
don't need to wipe the pan because who doesn't love the hoisin sriracha sauce? It goes well even with fish. That's legit. might be a good idea to add a napkin in here but I'm so hungry I'm not I don't really care anymore and just like that it's all done I cooked that probably in less than 10 minutes highly encourage you guys to try this recipe especially the venison one it's pretty simple oh, oh are you kidding me this is what I'm eating right here broccoli cauliflower venison fried burbot. I'm going to say a quick prayer and we can eat. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this day that you've blessed me with. It's just allowing me to come out here and explore creation and out here to do some, some chores on my end, setting up a trail cam and stuff like that. And everything has gone well today and I just can't thank you enough for that. I just thank you for keeping me safe, especially since I'm out here alone. And just thankful for this deer that you've allowed me to harvest last year and as well as allowing me to catch this bourbon, Lord. Right now I'm going to eat lunch and I'm going to continue to go check my trail camps. And I just pray that you watch over me and keep me safe, Lord. In Christ's name I pray, amen. All right, here we go. Venison, broccoli, right there. Mmm. Try some bourbon. Just nice white flaky meat. Nothing like working hard, hiking up up and down mountains all day, being super hungry, and then just coming to a meal like this. It is 7.21 p.m. right now, so the sun is setting. And after I shot my shotgun and got done eating, I wanna go check my third trail cam, that was a fail. The angle I put it out was not even correct, so there was really nothing to show there. And then uh, I took about an hour, 20 minute nap, just because I knew the turkeys weren't gonna get ready to roost yet. So I took a nap, and then right now, came over here perfect timing all the turkeys are back out in the fields they're feeding because they're getting ready to go to bed and I spotted that first flock there was a bunch of jakes there was like two or three gobblers long beards there were a couple hens so that was a pretty big flock and then I drove over here to another piece of public land and I glassed up a different flock and these guys they're actually on public land the first flock they were on private property but they weren't far from public land. So both of these flocks right now, if they stay where they are, I can set up on either flock. So my plan right now is on opening day, I'm gonna go and set up on the first flock. And if that doesn't work, or I get one and I have my second tag, I'll drive over here and I'll sneak in through this way because there's a access point over here for public property. And I'll sneak in and depending on where the turkeys are roosted, I'll just make my plan according to that. But this guy seems like there's actually a dominant bird in here because the other ones they weren't strutting at all all the gobblers were just feeding even the even the long beards but this flock right here every turkey is feeding besides one strutter and he's actually strutting so i'm assuming he's going to be the dominant bird for this flock so i'm debating if i want to pull out the spotting scope or not and get a better look at him but so my plan was if i came over here and i didn't see any turkeys i was going to call like locate but the fact that i i can already see them 
I don't need to call anything because I already I see the turkeys. All right, so I think that's gonna do it for this video. I still have some daylight left, so I'm gonna go scout or basically just go look at some other spots, some other public lands that are around here. Um, I know that there's two different flocks right here. One of them has a pretty nice tom in it. The other one has two or three like two-year-old gobblers, so they're not big, big. I know that these two flocks are here, and the thing with those flocks is, man, they're still flocked up with like 10, 20 birds. So that tells me that a lot of these hens, they're not ready to go and incubate the eggs yet. So they're probably still in the process of laying eggs and making their nest, which is good because if we open on May 5th, I feel like next week, majority of these hens should separate themselves off the, off the main flock. They're probably not gonna move because I, I scouted this flock about a month ago and they were literally in that same spot. So that tells me that these flocks, they're gonna be in the area. And so I can kind of just come and do a blind morning hunt if I wanted to because I know that they're gonna be in the area. But I'm losing daylight, so I'm gonna drive around and go hit some other public pieces. I'm pumped. I'm gonna end this video here. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys when we're killing turkeys.